and some of this might have been caused by the Andrew Hiller effect. Bingo! That's it! Right there! Yo. And the point is, this isn't comparing us against ourselves. This is comparing us against some random leaderboard where the programming changes every single year. <laughs> and that's not a good measure of whether we're fitter or not. And then she also talks about how she's measuring herself up against a bunch of random people on the leaderboard, which is true, but it's about the people that you measure up against year after year after year. Aren't there standardized tests that people will take throughout their lives? Or maybe when you're growing up, you're like, hey, you're in this percentile of height. You're in this percentile of height. All it's doing is it's taking you against everybody that your age group has within it. And then you go, hey, you're in the 80th percentile. Wow, now you're in the 70th percentile. Everyone else was growing faster than you. It's where you are relative to that group of people at that point in your life and that's how the test of fitness is supposed to work. Not, oh, I finished this pot and it sucks. It's you against you year after year. But again, that's me. And this is where, like, instead of a really random lift like a 1RM thruster, if we had like a 1RM deadlift or a snatch or a clean and jerk, then you could PB something and see real big progress in something that you train regularly and that you want to improve on. It's when I hear people say this sort of thing, Beth doesn't like the thruster, but she would prefer something a little bit more trained, that being the deadlift lift or maybe the snatch or the clean and jerk where I hope that I don't have a personal bias that comes out when I put things out into the world. Andrew, you always say this and clearly you're blind to that. Your blindness doesn't cause you to see the whole picture, which is why I love the comment sections. If 300 people are now pointing out the fact that you can't have a deadlift in the open and 10 people said, oh, I love a deadlift. It's probably because those 10 people really like deadlifting. And I already said it earlier in there. I don't like the fact that there was a thruster in the open, but if you were to have had a lift in the open, great, it's the thruster. It hits the entire body, shows your upper body pressing, it shows your leg strength. Of the lifts to have been shoes, I think the thruster is a great choice. But I don't like a strength test like that in the open. I just think there needs to be a better way to score it for the everyday person so that we actually can compare ourselves against ourselves. There is a way to do that, or at least there has been. I mean, if I go into my games profile, I've got 14, 15, 16, all the way through 2022, and you can see how I I did every single year in relation to the field. That's how you track your progress. And maybe I guess what she's saying right here is the CrossFit Games can have a better way of relaying this to people. And it's not as simple as saying, hey, you're a level eight. You're a level nine. Give them belts like jujitsu, I don't know. Maybe even a scoring system that doesn't put us on a worldwide leaderboard and something that can literally just compare our ability to our previous ability. So we can scroll back and see that year that we got our first muscle up and then see a year where we got like 10. Because a lot of us don't really care that we placed 30,000th amongst the world. We wanna know how we did against ourselves in 2016. You said it right there. What percentile were you in? 70th percentile in 2016, 80th in 2023. Cool, I'm better. But that's only if the test is good. But right now, there isn't a good way of measuring that. Frankly, I would pay $20 in order to have that measurement against myself. Bingo! That's it! Right there! I would pay $20 to see where I stack up. It's all I've been saying this whole time, right? There are two things. Remember, I've been doing this thing with the two hands. Like, you got a bucket one, you got bucket two. And in bucket one, you want to see where you stand as per the test of fitness tells you where you're going to fall. And in bucket number two, maybe you just believe in the brand and the method and all that. But that's it's gone, right? Because they love Chipotle. And in this one, well, I guess we don't even know if the test means anything because random people go random spots because the test freaking sucked this year. Thank you, Beth. <laughs> I did enter this year, but I'm not going to be paying next year to do the same thing because I didn't get anything out of it at all. What I won't be doing though, <laughs> I did enter this year, but I'm not going to be paying next year to do the same thing because I didn't get anything out of it at all. In Beth's not paying next year. Andrew Hiller and Beth aren't paying for the Open next year. Andrew's on steroids, so he's not paying, but he's also telling other people not to pay because there's no freaking reason right now to pay. In the end, I paid because I felt like I should, and I wanted to test the system and see if my videos got disallowed. Beth, you did the thing! Did your videos get disallowed? I'm gonna guess no. I wanted to experience how difficult the Open is to do and actually put your score up because I didn't in the previous year so that I could make this video coming from a standpoint of someone that's had to video it. And 
She did it too, she's elaborate. I'm elaborate, you're elaborate. How hard was it for Beth to make this video for her channel? And I wanna tell you guys how hard it was. Nice, cool. Even as a YouTuber, that was so difficult. Even as a YouTuber, it's difficult. Look, she's doing this thing with the camera, they go in and out, I don't know how she's doing that. And she's having difficulties putting freaking workouts in for the CrossFit game season. Imagine being a 65 year old dude with long hair, riding around on your freaking surfboard that's $20,000 and you're like, hey, why is this guy making fun of me? This video is great. It's not great and the CrossFit game should invalidate it. But imagine just having no idea how to do any of it. <laughs> and so not inclusive. Comparison is another huge factor. I think this is Sarah Sigmund's daughter's coach. She did an excellent post on how different levels of athletes, like elite competitors and everyday athletes, are really struggling at the end of the Open with lack of enjoyment, comparison, and not feeling good enough. She also mentioned that there'll come a day when you reach your peak fitness, and we're not necessarily going to get better after that. And that's another reason why this whole, oh, you're going to get better every year, is completely false, because at some point, we're not going to get better. <laughs> I don't look at it like that at all. Sure, it sucks. At some point in time, you're gonna realize that you're getting older or maybe your life has changed. I mean, hell, shining example right here. I'm in the chair, I'm doing the thing. I'm not working out as much as I used to. You would think my score would have gotten worse, but it didn't. Drives me freaking insane. I really wanted to get worse. I should have gotten worse because it meant the test was better. But real concrete data is cool to me. I think it's cool to everybody. It's what helps the world evolve. So if you see somebody who's getting worse at a certain age group, you say, okay, this is the way it works. And maybe in a hundred years, if CrossFit sticks around that long, you can point to the concrete data where people are getting worse in the open. And that's a way you can get better. Maybe even in the way where they curve certain tests, they can start to curve based upon previous data points that they've got. At the age of 35, it's how they made the 35 to 39 year old division. They look at it and they go, oh, I guess we don't have many people at this level of the games anymore, time to make a new age group. At some point or another, they might have a 30 to 34 year old division. You know why? Because every one of the CrossFit games is gonna be 26 year old and younger. Man. There's another really big reason why the CrossFit Open hasn't been inclusive. This isn't down to CrossFit, this is the community. And for the most part, the community is great, but there are a lot of things wrong with it too. And I think we need to start calling out this behavior. And some of this might have been caused by the Andrew Hiller effect normalizing the kind of no wrapping people. Yeah, it's good. Because imagine this. This is actually a perfect example. While I was in street parking HQ, the garage, we were doing a workout. Now you know that their big thing is fitness freedom. With that, the workout was five rounds, 20 back squats, 135 for the men, 95 for the women, and 15 toes to bar with a one minute reset in between those rounds. So you're supposed to go after that at a pretty fast clip. I know that I can cycle a low bar back squat way faster than I can a high bar back squat. Bars coming from the floor. If I had wanted to, you can also now take dumbbells and go overhead dumbbell squats. You can go sandbag squats. You can go goblet squats. And hell, if you really even wanted to, from what I understand, I guess you could do freaking deadlifts because it's your choice, fitness freedom. As far as the toes to bar go, you can go hang leg raises, you can go sit ups, you can go GHD sit ups, but at the end of the day, it's about the stimulus that you're getting from that workout. I was called out because Miranda put the video up She's got 250 something thousand followers on it. And somebody on Instagram goes, this is the guy who's pining for no reps everywhere. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, got me red handed. You got me. Yep. Doesn't look like I'm extending my hip on maybe half of those. And the depth on that is really, really iffy. But in my head, I knew that I was low bar squatting. In my head, I know that I hadn't gone to sleep in 48 hours. In my head. I know there was no leaderboard anywhere that my scores were going into. In my head. I knew that that video camera was on me and I knew I would have to face the repercussions and the ramifications of what I was doing right there. And the first thing that I did after the workout was done was I walked over to Miranda and I go, can I check those squats out? I looked at them and every single thought that I had right there was going, yep, those aren't low enough and I didn't extend my hip. I'll do better next time. But with the no rep process. Some of this might have been caused by the Andrew Hiller effect. All you are doing is you are are now giving people the tools to make those decisions. So when people now throw things at you on the internet, you ask yourself, one, was it a competition? No. Two, were you aware that there was a possibility that you weren't doing the best that you possibly could be? Sure, I was aware. Three, was it affecting other people? It's affecting somebody on the internet right now and that is an issue. Why is it affecting them? Why can't they understand 
and the separation between competition and somebody who can't even do competition any longer and general exercise. I've never claimed to be perfect. I'm far from it. And I actually embrace that sort of thing. I started off my video on programming yesterday prefaced with poke as many holes in it as possible. Because the only way where when push comes to shove, if I were to be doing it in a time when it mattered, in the back of my head would be sitting, I don't want to be doing squats the way that I did them that one time when I was in the street parking garage. And in a way, I should also be thanking that person because if there was a world in which I was not aware that those squats were to standard, thank you so much for now educating me on that. And some of this might have been caused by the Andrew Hiller effect. Now in my world, I knew that they weren't to standard. If I were to give myself a pass fail on that, it's a fail. But if I were to give myself a pass fail in terms of did I get a damn good workout in, then it's a pass. And for the people that I was surrounded with at that point, the only thing that I could gather from having spent time with them that weekend was that doing the thing is a pass. And that's what I took away from fitness freedom. Yeah. But what isn't okay is that a lot of people that are regular athletes, like regular gym goers, just doing it for fun, a lot of them not even entering their scores, are getting mean comments and people no repping them, messaging them on Instagram when they post something they're proud of, like their 1RM thruster or their first strict handstand push-up, and people are no repping them. If it's your first strict handstand push-up, it should legitimately be your first strict handstand push-up. And if it isn't, you really like somebody to tell you if it was not. You don't want it to be one of those gray areas where maybe you're going to sleep at night and you go, wow, was it really a strict handstand push-up? Everyone is really clapping for me, but were they really clapping for me? Is this real? There is a negative connotation between a couple of things in this world. I mean, hell, we went through two years where everyone's, if you're not wearing a mask, it means something bad. If you are wearing a mask, it means something bad. Because you're not wearing one, maybe it means something. If I'm overweight, it might mean something. Be like, hey, Andrew, you're fat. Hey, Andrew, you're skinny. People really reflect upon words. And for some reason, for some people, when you're called out for doing a no rep, it affects people the same way that it may if you're being called fat. Sometimes it's objective. You look down, you go, yeah, I could probably lose a few. If three months from now, it looks like all of my hair's falling out, I got holes in my face and itches and scabs everywhere, they go, Andrew, probably stop doing heroin. And then maybe I, no, no, I can't stop doing heroin. So it comes just as much from the person receiving the info, the heroin addict, the person who's possibly overweight, and the person being granted the no rep that it does from the person who is giving the info because you could always give it from a place of good, but I think what Beth is talking here is that there are people who are giving it from a place of bad. Be objective, let them be aware of it, and then let that person make their own mind up about it. If they get defensive, well, it's their fault they're angry. If I got defensive about my back squats in the garage on that day, why am I getting defensive about it? What's going on in Andrew's world? There's a tone, there's a way to present information. And as a coach, if we were doing a five by five back squat and I'm wandering around the gym, the more you get to know people, the more you get to know exactly what their process is. If you know there's somebody who has absolutely no care about hitting depth, depth, on a back squat. They came in to lift some heavy weight. The only thing that you do at that point is allow them to know that it's in their best interest to work on the things that would allow them to get better because it's what you do as a good person. Every part of your life is going to get better if you work on the things that now require a lower squat position. Even if it means going a little bit lighter, the heavy weight is not always the goal. If your squat looks like shit, it's probably a couple of other issues going in there. What is it that makes you wanna lift so heavy you can't get down there? Why is it that you don't wanna squat? Let's work on these things together. And if every single time you present those things and they say, nah, I'm not interested, nothing you can do to help them, but it doesn't mean you're gonna stop. But at least you're on the same page, you're aware. That person knows that you want them to get better for a certain reason, and you know that they don't want anything to do with it. But at least you can vibe on the fact that you're on the same page. It's cordial, and it's good, and it moves the entire world forward. They are their own worst enemy, at which point they can always flip the switch. Three years from now, they might say, you know, I'm tired of lifting heavy stuff and feeling all beat up, and maybe Andrew was right. I'm gonna start squatting below parallel. But when it comes to a competition, that hip crease gets below the knee. And in the examples I've seen of this, these people are being really pedantic like a lot of the strict handstand push-up reps specifically like their head was definitely touching the ground you can see that it's just somebody doesn't like the athlete and they've basically got a little bit jealous and they've decided to try and take them down they're just trying to find any way shape or form to take down somebody that's proud of their achievement and somebody that maybe did better yeah that's a little messed up i've made it abundantly clear that when people start working out they become some sort of an amorphous blob of exercise i think that the quote that i had at one point was it's a 
pretty cut up amorphous blob. And yeah, clearly I know who Noah Olsen is doing double unders and getting 49 on his first and his third sets, but it's nothing personal against Noah. He was just merely a bullet point for me to now see if the CrossFit Games is gonna do anything to his score on the leaderboard. Because now the entire world can see that he didn't do the right number of double unders and the entire world can also see now if they're going to do anything about it. Thus far, they have not. And that was the point. We wanna know if they're actually looking at the leaderboard. And if they're not looking at his, you better damn well bet they're not looking at yours. I don't know what it is about me, but I don't care who it is. I make that entire video, the 2023 no rep video that I put up the other day. I don't know a single person on that video with the exception of Annie. But it's black and white if things are being done the right way. Just don't be a dick and refer to what I said about five minutes ago. And I think we need to do more work around this kind of mindset within CrossFit to teach people not to do that and that it's not okay to be no repping people, especially when they're just doing the open for fun. It doesn't matter! Whether or not you're doing the open for fun or not, because if it were a test, there are standards. You have those folders up on your desk when you're taking tests because you don't want people looking over because maybe you saw the answer to number four and everyone knows what Billy Joe's freaking answer was on number four. And now everyone's got Billy Joe's answer, which makes that question on that test irrelevant. And we don't want irrelevancy. We want a good test. But again, there is a way to go about this with respect, both from the giver and from the receiver. If you don't know how to do that, it takes practice. Figure it out. Try it out. Give a no rep. See how it goes. Do you feel uncomfortable with it? Good. Lean into that. When someone calls you out, ask yourself, well, why am I doing this CrossFit Open workout? If I'm just trying to get a workout in, shouldn't I just get a workout in? But this is a test. I don't just take the ACT for fun. Is that what you think? You think? And if you do, that's weird. Yeah, just let me get my spelling book out and let's see if I know all the adjectives to the word frog. Uh-huh, you frog. I don't know. But from what I've experienced, I bet that maybe 70 or 80% of people just don't know. Is that how you do a wall walk? Actually, I didn't even know what a wall walk was until today. Can you help me? That's all that happens, but be nice. This is something that I experienced last year. I literally did the open. A lot of my equipment wasn't standard and I didn't have a judge. So I didn't realize that on a couple of my burpees, my chest didn't hit the floor, but it didn't matter. Is that what you think, you think? Because I wasn't entering my score. I, it wasn't being validated. I didn't have a judge to tell me that it was a no rep. And I posted this video on Instagram and I got loads of hate for it. All from CrossFitters, many of them CrossFit coaches, and it's just not okay. I wonder if Beth knew about these beforehand. With everything that was just said, on a test, if I were Beth, the way you do it is, oh, my chest didn't hit the floor on those burpees, so those ones don't count. So without the entire world, Beth, in her own head, in her own space, would now say, if this is where I stand with these burpees and these ones didn't count, now this is where I am. There's a world where, potentially, and maybe she could answer this question, everyone's now pointing out the fact that she didn't do those burpees. Albeit, there should be a level of respect there and say, hey, Beth, I saw that on those burpees your chest wasn't hitting the floor. I see there isn't a judge there and maybe you just wanted to know. Maybe Beth had no idea. I'd say it's plausible. That's what the judge is there for in the first place. That's why the elite athletes do thousands of burpees every single month. It becomes freaking robotic for them. It hit, I know, let's go. But are you seeing the trend here? Just be nice on both ends. And there should be people telling you when you're doing things wrong, but be nice. The Open should be a really positive experience where people get their first pull-ups or their PB lifts and the community is really nice and welcoming. And it definitely has been that way for me. There you go, nice and welcoming. Nice and no repetitioning. Like a few years ago. And this year, it was a really enjoyable experience for me in many ways. We need to find a way to go back to that community spirit. And also we need to stop pressuring people to do the Open too. And I did see a lot of posts kind of shaming people or saying like oh leave your ego at the door like implying that if somebody doesn't enter it's because they've got a big ego and they don't want to be on a scoreboard perfect we're not pushing people to sign up for the open anymore are we beth which like fine if you if you don't want to be on a scoreboard that is okay like if it does too much to your mental health to be put on a scoreboard against other people that is fine if it does too much to your mental health to be put on a scoreboard you should be asking yourself why it puts you in such a spot with your mental health that you're on a scoreboard like don't enter we need to stop Stop having a go at people for not entering and not literally just flushing $20 down the drain. However, I can get down to that one. Don't flush $20 on the drain if it's just going to make you feel bad. And I should also back that last statement up with, I'm cool with people just working out to work out as well. 100, 1 million, 1 trillion percent. But I think that it was kind of born in the freaking fire that was CrossFit, that you're looking to get better. And if it's something that makes you uncomfortable, that being signing up for the open, and you take that leap, I think that in a messed up sort of way, it might be good for your mental health. 
to do that sort of thing for you. Because what do you get other than finding that you're 30,000th in the world? Nothing. All in all, I do like the open and I did really enjoy like the buzz around it and being able to do the workouts with people together. I enjoyed a lot of things about it, but I also think if it's gonna stay, <laughs> a lot of things need to change and maybe having these kind of conversations can help turn it into a better mass participation event where people feel included and valued and they feel like they actually are proving how they've progressed across the year. And if you need a reminder, however you did in the open is not a good sign of how much progress you've made across the year, especially if you didn't get to test those things that you've been working on. Don't let it make you feel like you're not enough. You are enough exactly as you are. That last bit <sighs> makes my mind melt. I'm gonna need to release into that to actually soak it in. Cause it's like what Adrian said, but it's so much worse. You need the workouts to be something where everybody can do them together, which beckons to what she had been talking about in relation to the deadlift versus the thruster and not having it at a point in which you had to earn the barbell, that being in a three week session, which we know CrossFit isn't gonna move away from. So where this year it was 25%, maybe next year it's gonna be 33% of the overall score. I think if it's gonna stay, <laughs> a lot of things need to change. And She says a lot of things need to change and I'm not really big on that because I think that too many things have changed. Have you ever heard like, don't mess with a good thing or the grass is always greener on the other side? What does it look like when you wanna go back to the side that had the green grass? Like, oh, holy hell, it's brown over here. I gotta get back to the green grass. Take away the floor plans. I know the three weeks are here to stay, but keep it simple, stupid. Less is more in the CrossFit Open. Where people feel included and valued and they feel like they actually are proving how they've progressed across the year. The artist that would need to compile an event where everybody would feel included while making it the ultimate test of fitness for the open, which is what she wants right there. I wanna meet that human. This year, that's not the result that we got. Adrian did not do that for us. He said he wanted to serve the community and at least one person doesn't feel served. And if you need a reminder, however you did in the open is not a good sign of how much progress you've made across the year. See, and she finishes it up with that point, which is however you did in the open isn't how you've progressed over the year. And it's like, she said somewhere in there and I got all riled up about it. Like, what's the point then? It's my biggest argument. I think that what CrossFit's doing is what Beth is suggesting here. They want to make it as inclusive as possible, make it as much of a community event as they can, and they've lost the test. Tell us that. Somebody, in the way that I'm relaying things to you right now, make it well known. Adrian Bosman, start a YouTube channel, CrossFit, bring me on to tell everybody the things that are happening. I'll do it every day. But now you gotta pay me a buttload of money. You're lost. You could have done it six months ago. It would have been free. Don't let it make you feel like you're not enough. You are enough exactly as you are. And I touched on a lot of stuff. I've recorded for an hour in response to this video. Nuts. But she says that you can do it for fun. And I agree. And I'm wearing the for fun shirt. This is the street parking fitness freedom for fun shirt. I really like this shirt. Long sleeves. I don't have enough of them. But there's a lot of learning points that can be made in here. Anybody can work out for fun. When you're doing the test of fitness, you expect to be tested. You wanna be spat out the back end, knowing where you stacked up. In a perfect world, those two things also now are cool and drive community engagement. There are eight billion people in the world, CrossFit. You want 30 million of them? I know you sent that email out saying that somewhere. I know it. Do you want 30 million people who are just kind of signing up with that bucket you got every year just dumps out? Sean Woodland made a statement at the open announcement. And the cool thing about the open this year is we have 113,000 new people throwing down. There are 110 or 15,000 new CrossFitters signed up for the Open this year. But if you look at Open registration, we're only plus 15 or 20,000. And simple math tells me that you lost 90,000 CrossFitters from last year. You picked up 115, cool. But why do those 90,000 people leave? If you were to ask me, it's because you haven't given them a reason to stay. Give them a reason to stay. That's all I'm suggesting. Thanks, Beth. Andrew Hiller, out.